Hello, everyone. My name is Flavio Pereira. I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure on the Technical Enablement Team. And this is the second portion of the data migration. So on this second portion, we're going to talk about offline transport. We're going to cover data transfer appliance and data transfer disk. So if you're planning to move a good amount of data, a huge amount of data from your on-premises to OCI, you have two options that you can um, that you can use to accomplish that. You can use data transfer disk or data transfer appliance. So the data transfer disk is a service that you can just ship a hard driver to Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. And these hard drivers can be a SATA disk or a USB disk that you can hook up to your servers on your on-premises environment. You can copy the data inside of those disks and then send that disk over uh, to us. Then we're going to copy that data to an object storage that was a, that was um, a specific, uh, to, uh, specific dedicated to you. So you're going to give us which object storage you want to you put that data. And then we're going to copy that data there. And then you're going to have access to through that data on that object storage. Then you can copy that over to your block storage or your local machine uh, that you have up and running inside of OCI. Uh, so the data transfer appliance, uh, instead of you providing the hard, the hard driver, uh, we're going to send you an appliance. We're going to send an appliance to you. Uh, you're going to copy that data inside of that appliance. Uh, and then send that appliance back back to Oracle, and then we're going to copy the data to the object storage, and then give you access uh, through that data, right? So what's the difference between those two? Uh, the data transfer disk, you can go up to 100 terabytes of data, uh, and you can send that 10 disks per uh, transfer package. So the limit capacity is 100 terabytes. You can divide that in 10 disks and then send that over uh, to us. And then we copy that data uh, there um, uh, for you. So the data transfer appliance, the capacity is 150 terabytes. So if you go uh, beyond 100 terabytes and you don't have to copy, send in multiple hard drives, you can just ask for the appliance. It's easy to ask through the OCI console. We can send the appliance um, over to you. And then uh, you get that, you put the data inside of the appliance, and uh, we encrypted that data, right, and then send that over uh, to us. Okay, so it's, those two options are available, uh, very easy to use, very easy to get um, this requested uh, through the OCI console. And, and then you can, you can send that data uh, over to OCI. So just to give an idea of the data transfer appliance specification, right? So the hard drive, you can use the hard drive. You can have one hard drive today on your own premises. But for the transfer appliance, you might need to understand what's the specifications of the hardware that we're going to send it to you, right? Uh, so just a couple of things to highlight here. You can see the appliance weight is 38 pounds uh, and 64 pounds if, you, if you're counting the, the shipping case. There's a shipping case that will be... Um, that we're going uh, with the appliance towards you. Uh, you have to remember that the appliance, the only thing that's exposed to you as a customer to plug on the appliance is the, the power, the network, and the serial console. So those are the three, uh, the three things that will be available for you to actually plug on that appliance. Uh, you can hook up that appliance on, uh, on your uh, rack, Right, on your data center is a 2U device. So you can just put it on top of the table or if you have a rack, you just can hook up that on the, on the rack uh, and then connect the network, connect the power, connect the serial console uh, if you need to uh, start copying the data over there. Data secure, there is a AS256 encryption. Uh, so when you copy the data in, on inside of the appliance, we're gonna use the utilities to uh, make sure that you apply the encryption uh, on that data. And then uh, when you ship that back to us, uh, the data will be encrypted all the way from your own or your location until it get to, uh, to the OCI, right? Uh, network connectivity is a 10, uh, gigapipe, uh, 10 gigabit network uh, that's available. So if you have a, a, a 10 gigabit uh, network connectivity on your local um, network, so that, that's going to take advantage of it, right? So those are the few uh, specifications and information about the hardware that you need to understand. Also, the management interface is a NFS a V3, V4, or 4.1. So that's how you're actually going to um, uh, mount the, the device and connect to the device so you can start sending, uh, copying the data over there. So what about the encryption, right? I, I touched uh, the encryption uh, that you have to encrypt the data. But uh, the, whether you're using the appliance or the disk, right? So the, the encrypted 
data is going to be at rest with AES-256 uh, bit encryption. Uh, and all the encryption password is actually stored uh, in, in, or in OCI, which is separated from the transfer appliance or disk. So when you created the, the encryption password um, to actually seal the disk or seal the appliance, uh, that will be copied directly on OCI, and, and then it's not going to be traveling with the disk um, when you're shipping that over uh, to us. So if someone... Perhaps, you know, we, uh, the shipping uh, company just lost the disk or lost the hard drive. Uh, that's not a problem. No, no one will be able to actually um, get access to the data you put it over there, right? Because they don't have the, the way to encrypt, decrypt your, your uh, encryption and then they get access to the data, okay? And once you land that data in the OCI bucket on the object storage, it's also encrypted as well. It's encrypted at rest. So there's an encryption of the, the data on the object, st object storage too, okay? So how do you put actually the encryption uh, on the disk, right? Um, using data transfer utility, uh, that's actually a command line or a software that you, you, can, you can install on your machine. Uh, that's going to help you to prepare the transfer disk um, and prepare all the data, encrypted data for uh, the shipment, and then you, you can send that over to OCI. So there's few requirements here in terms of um, the operating system that you can install that. Uh, Java uh, version as well. So I highly recommend you might want to use a, um, a virtual machine uh, just to have this data transfer utility installed. Then you can uh, get access to the um, to the data and then copy the data over to your data transfer disk or data transfer appliance and using that machine uh, just to encrypt the data and um, finalize that for uh, shipment. There are some firewall requirements uh, as well uh, so you can get access to the object storage later on to um, uh, get access to your data, so make sure you have some of those uh, set the fire configuration enabled, uh, so that way you can get access to the data once that's uh, that moved to OCI. So another option in terms of um, a command line for preparing the data, you can use the command line interface, uh, the OCI CLI, which has a DTS uh, functionality uh, on the OCI CLI to actually help you to prepare the appliance and you know all the data to ship that to OCI. Okay, um, that will help you with the encryption too. Uh, and um, you have to use that on the Linux machine. So the only thing is if you're using command line interface, that's only available on the Linux um, operating system. So then you can, you can use that as an option uh, to, to encrypt the data and send the data over uh, as well. Okay, so how the data transfer works? What's the workflow for that, right? Um, you're gonna create a transfer job. You can use that to the OCI console or the command line interface. You can create that transfer job. You can request one or more appliances. So if you're willing to do the transfer, the data transfer appliance, you can request that to the to the console. Then once you request, you're gonna receive the appliance. Uh, once you receive it, you connect the appliance to the network. Connect that to the, to the appliance via serial console or or, or IP, so it depends how you want to connect to it. Uh, then you're going to use one of the utilities, the transfer utility or the command line interface to prepare the appliance, to um, uh, create the, 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 the encryption, right, and the data sets. Uh, once you copied everything there, you're going to seal the data set uh, using the manifest file that will be generated through the data transfer uh, utility or the, the OCI CLI. And then you're going to finalize the transfer, right? You're going to finalize the transfer, which is going to be uh, to ship that data transfer appliance back to Oracle or send the, the data transfer disk to, to Oracle. And then we're going to copy that data to the object storage. So those are the, the six steps on the high level, okay? Um, so if you're still thinking about why should I use the offline um, transport, right? Uh, what's the advantage of it? So this is just one uh, quick table to show you. If you want to send data, uh, and let's say you have a link of 10 megabits per second or 100 or 1 gigabits per second, this is the amount of time that's going to take, uh, depends on the data size, right? So that's one example. If you're using 100 terabytes, uh, which is uh, ideal for data transfer uh, disk, right? If you decided to send that over to internet and you have a 100 megabits per second network, 
uh, bandwidth on the internet, that's going to take roughly 101 days to do it, right? So that's going to take a lot of time. Uh, and if you do that using data transfer services, going to get get uh, this done in one week, okay? So same thing if you're going to 500 terabytes or one petabyte of data, right? Depends on the connectivity you have. Uh, it's better if you do that uh, with the data transfer services. So sending one petabyte of data, even if you have one gigabits um, uh, network using Fast Connect, it's going to take 101 days too. So in two weeks, you're going to have that data uh, available to you. Okay. So this is just give an idea of the data sets of, uh, and how long it'll take if you decided to send um, through a public interface or using data transfer service. Okay. So that, that concludes our, our portion. Uh, the next video, we're going to talk about online transport. And we're going to use some of the options for like uh, storage gateway or using even using, uh, you know, have your fast connect connected, your VPN connectivity. So what are the options uh, you have for online transport? Thanks for watching.